honored for what he received. Honor has been reward for what he gave. It is our esteemed pride that we have with us an eminent and inspirational personality, Dr. Professor Casey Sunny, sir. Sir is the professor of our department and has 30 years of experience, the teacher of Kerala University. Sir joined us in the year of 2070, then appointed as Vice Chancellor of National University of Advanced Legal Studies, and Sir will come back after VC tenure in January 2023. Sir is a senior most professor of Central University of Kerala and has delivered lectures in 16 foreign universities and has interactive sections in six foreign universities, including Harvard Law School. Without further ado, I invite Professor Dr. Casey Sunny, sir, for inaugural address. Sir, please. Respected Chairman, Dr. J. Sankar, Dean, School of Legal Studies, and Head of the Department of Law, Central University of Kerala, Dr. Prakash Tivagaran, Global Research Conference Forum, Pune, Dr. J. Girish Kumar, Associate Professor, Central University of Kerala, other faculty members, distinguished guests, Research scholars, students, and other participants. My original idea was to personally present in Central University of Kerala, which is my home institution. But because of this unexpected hartal, I am forced to join online. Anyway, it is nice to see that Dr. Jay Shankar and Dr. Girish Kumar and their team is organizing the seminar in spite of this hostile environment. This seminar is on Recent trends in management, science, commerce, technology, law, and human rights. And the theme is sustainable strategies, measures, solutions for business management, science, and contemporary issues, and reflections amidst pandemic. So, The title, nearly six academic disciplines are mentioned. Management, Science, Commerce, Technology, Law and Human Rights. Law, Human Rights. So, when we are discussing the other issues, there may be a basic question. Which academic discipline may be placed in the center point? My academic discipline is law, but I have some experience in human rights in the context of international conventions, etc., etc. As a part of law. However, I bona fidely believe that in this type of discourses human rights should be the central point why when we are addressing human rights in the broad social context we can see that human rights are basically values Values which are essential for the individual and collective well-being of human beings. So all our, our activities may be aimed at <coughs> whether scientific investigation, 
whether business management or running a business or international trade and commerce or internal trade and commerce science technology all these things should be aimed at achieving one thing that is individual and collective well being of human beings if i use the term human being then second aim will come into the picture firstly all our activities may be intended to ensure the individual and collective well being of human beings that must be the first objective secondly it should aim at maintaining the ecological balance that is very very important so all activities must be must be aimed at realization of human rights and maintenance maintenance of ecological balance within that framework we may address the theme of the seminar what is law theoretically speaking society is the superstructure polity is the substructure and law is the infrastructure as in the case of any other infrastructure like airport communic electric supply communication facilities ports water supply etc railway station etc etc for any social development support of the infrastructure in the form of legal framework for regulation is essential that is why when electricity was invented electricity act was enacted atomic energy was enacted atomic energy act was enacted now latest invention is procreation to human cloning so many nations in the world enacted specific laws for adoption of human technology for the purpose of reproduction then pandemic for addressing the various issues related to pandemic several countries enacted new legislation india itself enacted this uh, pandemic act at the state level government of kerala enacted the so the point is that what may be the social development <coughs> support in the form of legal framework is essential then coming to other two topic science management and commerce this is the age of science and this is the age of science and technology there is no dispute and development in science and technology resulted in the increase of trade and commerce actually history of human beings is a history of resources identified identified the identity history of identification of resources and technology for its utilization in the primitive stage only technology identified was sorry only resource identified was bare foods only in later stage human being started to uh, started to consume this uh, cooked food anyway and in the later stage domestic animal constituted major resource of human beings in the agricultural society land was the major resource in the industrial society 
minerals and metals are the important resources in this modern age of science and technology there are new new resources airways and frequencies that is a new resource knowledge itself is a resource that is the basis of the concept of the concept of this intellectual property rights knowledge itself is a is a uh, is a major resource and it is a commodity for commodity for sale so the score for sale of commodities in these substantial so there are new strategies for trade both at domestic level and at in the at the industry industrial uh, and at industry uh, and at international level there are new strategies for taxation collection of taxes that is why constitution was amended and gst uh, provision for gst was gst was collection of gst was incorporated in the constitution then in this modern age of science and technology one of the other important resource is trained human power so many students are attending this seminar i know so my humble request to the students is that you should try to become the part of trained human power in terms of knowledge acquired in terms of skills acquired and in terms of values assimilated then for the purpose of proper mind power planning or human power planning there is separate division in the management that is human resource management so the academic discipline of management is expanding <coughs> earlier the degree awarded by the management department was this mba master, master of business Ad, 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 administration now there are so many other degrees hr etc etc then uh, in the mba itself within rike at human resource development or this uh, uh, marketing etc etc anyway the importance of management department is also increasing then when we are discussing basic issues in relation to the theme of the seminar we may remember one thing that is the importance of values actually the basis of legislation is certain values as i mentioned earlier human rights ud ud hr that is a document containing certain values constitution of india containing certain values when we are discussing about values one thing profound of by our father of nation is very significant because the seminar is on commerce science uh technology law etc etc father of the nations always talked about seven grave sins actually this seven graves grave sins are not a thing formulated by the father of nation but by some other person that was uh in the Uh, he got this idea by when, when visiting this Westminster Abbey. I, that is my understanding about. It. Coming to the seven grave sins, at least two grave sins are very relevant in this contest. Firstly, science without humanity is a grave sin. Science without humanity is a grave sin. Commerce without principle is a grave sin. Politics without principle is a grave sin. For students, 
knowledge without character is a grave sin so there are all sins also like uh, worship without sacrifice etc etc i am mentioning all these things please refer to uh, to google that is all anyway my point is that the scientific developments trade commerce management of the things everything should be aimed at two basic things that is really that, that is realization of human rights which is realization of all values which are essential for individual and collective well being of human beings secondly maintenance of this ecological balance because this maintenance of ecological balance has great significance especially in the indian context because if one ask which are the three basic indian values or which are the basic indian values without any hesitation i will say peace tolerance and ecocentrism so ecocentrism is very very important <coughs> when we are discussing the issue of this sustainable strategy this ecocentrism has great significance when discussing about development madhav harvil madhav gargil always says that proper balancing or proper utilization of four capitals is essential first capital human capital second capital economic capital third capital technological capital last capital nature itself is a is uh, that is na nature capital that is nature itself is a capital though that is not specifically mentioned in the theme of the seminar that aspect must to also be taken into consideration that is when we are discussing about sustainable strategy preservation of this nature preservation of the nature with its all beauties it is all utility etc etc i am happy in saying that there are so many scholars present here there are so many papers i wish this seminar a grand success i once again congratulate dr jay sangar dean and head of the department and dr jay girish kumar the associate professor the uh, dr meera assistant professor research scholars and students and dr prakash divagar for organizing this seminar in an excellent manner i declare that this seminar is being inaugurated thank you very much thank you sir for those inspirational words